How does it come about that alongside of the idea of ponderable matter, which is derived by abstraction from everyday life, the physicists set the idea of the existence of another kind of matter, the ether? The explanation is probably to be sought in those phenomena which have given rise to the theory of action at a distance, and in the properties of light which have led to the undulatory theory. Let us devote a little while to the consideration of these two subjects. Outside of physics, we know nothing of action at a distance. When we try to connect cause and effect in the experiences which natural objects afford us, it seems as first as if there were no other mutual actions than those of immediate contact. For example, the communication of motion by impact, push and pull, heating or inducing combustion by means of a flame, etc. It is true that even in everyday experience, weight, which is in a sense Weight, action at a distance, a sense plays a very distance, important part. Very important but since part. in daily experience but the weight of bodies meets us as something meets constant, as something, something constant, not linked to any cause which is variable in time or place, in time we do place. not in everyday we life in speculate, everyday speculate, as, speculate as, to as to the cause of gravity, gravity and, therefore and therefore do not become do not conscious become of its character as action at a distance. It was Newton's theory, was of, Newton's gravitation theory of gravitation that first assigned, that first a, cause assigned a cause for gravity for by gravity, interpreting it as action at a distance, proceeding, at a distance proceeding from masses. Proceeding from masses. Newton's, theory Newton's theory is probably the greatest stride ever made in the effort towards the causal effort nexus, towards the nexus of natural phenomena. And yet, this and theory yet, evoked this a lively evoked sense of discomfort among Newton's contemporaries, because it seemed to be in conflict with the principles springing from the rest of experience, that there can, that there be, can reciprocal be reciprocal action, action only, through only through contact and not through and not immediate, immediate action, action at, a distance. at a distance. It is only with, reluctance, only with reluctance that man's that desire for desire knowledge, for knowledge endures, endures a dualism of this kind. kind. How is, How is unity, unity to be preserved in his comprehension of the forces of nature? nature? Either, either by trying by to trying look upon to look contact, contact forces, forces as being as themselves being distant forces, which, which admittedly are observable only at a very small, small distance. distance. And this was and the this road, was the road which, Newton's which Newton's followers, followers who were entirely, entirely under the spell, under the spell of, his of his doctrine, doctrine mostly preferred to take. take. Or, or by assuming, by assuming that, the that the Newtonian action at a distance is only apparently immediate action at a distance, but in truth is conveyed truth by a medium permeating space, space, whether by movements, whether by or, by movements or by elastic deformation of this medium. Of this medium. Thus the endeavour toward a unified Thus, view of the nature of forces leads to the hypothesis of an ether. This hypothesis, to be sure, did not at first bring with it any advance in the theory of gravitation or in physics generally, so that it became customary to treat generally. Newton's law of so force as an axiom not Newton's further reducible. But the ether hypothesis was bound always to play some part in physical science, even, part in science, even if at first only a latent part. When in the first half of the 19th century, the far-reaching similarity was revealed, which subsists between the properties of light and those of elastic waves and ponds bodies, the ether, bodies, the ether hypothesis found fresh support. Found fresh support. It, appeared it appeared beyond question that light question must be interpreted must be as a vibratory as a process in an elastic, in an elastic inert, inert medium, medium filling up universal, filling up space. universal space. space. It also seems it to be a necessary, be a necessary consequence, consequence of the fact of the that fact light is capable, light is capable of, polarization, of polarization, that this medium, that this medium the ether, the must, ether be the must be of the nature of a solid body, a body because transverse waves are not possible in a fluid but only in a solid. Thus the physicists were bound to arrive at the theory of the quasi-rigid luminiferous ether, the parts of which can carry out no movements relatively to one another except the small movements of deformation which correspond to light waves. This theory, also called the theory of the stationary luminiferous ether, moreover found a strong support in an experiment which is also of fundamental importance in the 
special theory of relativity, the experiment of Fizol, from which one was obliged to infer that the luminiferous ether does not take part in the movements of bodies. The phenomenon of aberration also favoured the theory of the quasi-rigid ether. The development of the theory of electricity along the path opened up by Maxwell and Lorentz gave the development of our ideas concerning the ether quite a peculiar and unexpected turn. For Maxwell himself, the ether indeed still had properties which were purely mechanical, although of a much more complicated kind than the mechanical properties of tangible solid bodies. But neither Maxwell nor his followers succeeded in elaborating a mechanical model for the ether which might furnish a satisfactory mechanical interpretation of Maxwell's laws of the electromagnetic field. The laws were clear and simple, the mechanical interpretations clumsy and contradictory. Almost imperceptibly, the theoretical physicists adapted themselves to a situation which, from the standpoint of their mechanical program, was very depressing. They were particularly influenced by the electrodynamical investigations of Heinrich Hertz. For, whereas they whereas previously, had previously had required of a conclusive theory that it should, that it should content itself, itself with the fundamental concepts which belong exclusively to mechanics, for example, for example densities, densities, velocities, velocities deformation, stresses, stresses, they gradually, they gradually accustomed, accustomed, themselves accustomed themselves to admitting to electric and magnetic forces as fundamental concepts side by side, side with those of mechanics, of mechanics without, without requiring mechanical, mechanical interpretation, interpretation for them. Thus, yes. the the purely mechanical view of nature was gradually abandoned, but this change led to a fundamental dualism, which in the long run was insupportable. A way of escape was now sought in the reverse direction, by reducing the principles of mechanics to those of electricity, and this especially as confidence in the strict validity of the equations of Newton's mechanics was shaken by the experiments with beta rays and rapid cathode rays. This dualism still confronts us in unextenuated form in the theory of Hertz, where matter appears not only as the bare of velocities, kinetic energy, and mechanical, pressures, pressures, kinetic but energy also and mechanical pressures, fields, but also as the bearer of electromagnetic fields. fields. Vacuo, Since such fields either, also occur in also vacuo, i.e. in free ether, the ether also the ether appears, appears as bearer of electromagnetic fields. The ether appears within indistinguishable in its functions from ordinary matter. Space, within matter, it takes velocity. part in the motion so of matter, and in empty space, it has everywhere a velocity, so that the ether has a no definitely assigned velocity throughout the whole of space. There is no fundamental Hertz's difference between Hertz's ether, Hertz's ether and ponderable Hertz matter, which in part subsists in the ether. The Hertz ether, theory on suffered on the not hand, only from the defect of ascribing to matter and ether, on the one hand, mechanical states, and on the other hand, electrical states, which do not stand in any conceivable relation to each other. It was also at variance with the results of Fizeau's important experiment on the velocity of the propagation of light in moving fluids and with other established experimental results. Such was the state of things when H. A. Lorentz entered upon the scene. He brought theory into harmony with experience by means of a wonderful simplification of theoretical principles. He achieved this, the most important advance in the theory of electricity since Maxwell, by taking from ether qualities. its mechanical and from matter as its electromagnetic space, so in qualities. Of bodies, as in empty space, so too in the interior of material bodies, the ether, and not matter viewed atomistically, was exclusively the seat of, Lawrence, of electromagnetic the fields. Particles of matter According to Lorentz, the, the elementary particles of matter alone are capable of carrying out movements, their electromagnetic activity 
is entirely confined Thus, to the carrying Lawrence of electric charges. In Thus, electron Lorentz succeeded in reducing all equations electromagnetic for happenings space. to Maxwell's equations for free space. As to the mechanical nature of the Lorentzian ether, it may be said of it in a somewhat playful spirit that immobility is the only mechanical property of which it has not been deprived by H. A. Lorentz. It may be added that the whole change in the conception of the ether which the special theory of relativity brought about consisted in taking away from the ether its last mechanical quality, namely its immobility. How this is to be understood will forthwith be expounded. The space-time theory and the kinematics of the special theory of relativity were modeled on the Maxwell-Lorentz theory of the electromagnetic field. This theory, therefore, satisfies the conditions of the special theory of relativity, but when viewed from the latter, it acquires a novel aspect. For if K be a system of coordinates relatively to which the Lorentzian ether is at rest, the Maxwell-Lorentz equations are valid primarily with reference to K. But by the special theory of relativity, the same equations without any change of meaning also hold in relation to any new system of coordinates K prime, which is moving in uniform translation relatively to K. Now comes the anxious question. Now comes the anxious why question. I, the why must I, in the theory, distinguish the K system above all K prime systems, which are physically equivalent to it in all respects, by assuming that the ether is at rest relatively to the K system? For the theory of the such an asymmetry, asymmetry in the theoretical structure, structure with no, no corresponding asymmetry, asymmetry in the system of experience, experience is, is intolerable. intolerable. If we assume the if ether to be at rest to relatively, to, relatively K, to K, but in motion, but in motion relatively, to, relatively K K to K prime, the physical equivalence of K and K prime seems to me, from the logical standpoint, not indeed downright incorrect, but nevertheless inacceptable. The next position position which it the was possible to take up in face of this state of things appear to be the following. The ether does not following. exist at all. The, the electromagnetic fields are not states of a medium and are not bound are not down to any bearer, but they are independent realities which are not reducible to anything else, exactly like the atoms of ponderable matter. This conception suggests itself the more readily. As, according to Lorentz's theory, the electromagnetic as, radiation, Lorentz's like theory, ponderable matter, brings impulse and energy like with it, and as, according to the special theory of relativity, both matter and radiation are but special relativity. forms of distributed both energy, ponderable mass losing its isolation and appearing energy. as a special form of energy. More careful reflection teaches us, however, that the special theory of relativity does not compel us to deny ether. We may assume the existence of an ether, only we must give up ascribing a definite state of motion to it, i.e., we must by abstraction take from it the last mechanical characteristic which Lorentz had still left We shall see later that this point of view, the conceivability of which I shall at once endeavour to make more intelligible by a somewhat halting comparison, is justified by the results of the General theory of relativity. Justified by the results of the Think of waves of on the surface of water. Here we can Think describe two entirely different water. things. Here Either we, we may observe how the undulatory surface forming the boundary Either between water and air alters in the course of time, or else, with the help of small floats for instance, time. we can observe else, how the position the of the separate of particles of water alters in the course of time. Of the if the existence of such floats for tracking the motion of the particles of a fluid were a fundamental impossibility in physics, if, in fact, nothing else whatever were observed, Observable than the shape of the space fact, occupied by the water as it varies in time, we should have no ground for the assumption that water consists of movable particles. But all the same, we could characterize it as a medium. We have something like this in the electromagnetic field. 
before, we, have we may like picture this. the field to ourselves as consisting of lines we of force. To if we wish to interpret of these lines of force to ourselves as something material in the ordinary sense, we are tempted to interpret the dynamic processes as motions of these lines of force, such that each separate line of force is tracked through the course of time. It is well known, however, that this way of regarding the electromagnetic field leads to contradictions. Generalizing, we must say this, there may be supposed to be extended physical objects to which the idea of motion cannot be applied. They may not be thought of as consisting of particles which allow themselves to be separately tracked through time. In Minkowski's idiom, this is expressed as follows. Not every extended conformation in the four-dimensional world can be regarded as composed of world threads. The special theory of relativity forbids us to assume the ether to consist of particles observable through time, but the hypothesis of ether in itself is not in conflict with the special theory of relativity. Only we must be on our guard against ascribing a state of motion to the ether. Certainly, from the standpoint of the special theory of relativity, the ether hypothesis appears at first to be an empty hypothesis. In the equations of the electromagnetic field, there occur, in addition to the densities of the electric charge, only the intensities of the field. The career of electromagnetic processes in vacuo appears to be completely determined by these equations, uninfluenced by other physical quantities. The electromagnetic fields appear as ultimate, irreducible realities, and at first it seems superfluous to postulate a homogeneous isotropic ether medium and to envisage electromagnetic fields as states of this medium. But on the other hand, there is a weighty argument to be adduced in favor of the ether hypothesis. To deny the ether is ultimately to assume that empty space has no physical qualities whatever. The fundamental whatever. facts of mechanics do not harmonize with this view. For the mechanical behavior of a corporeal a system hovering freely in empty space depends not only on space, relative positions, not only distances, on relative positions, and relative velocities, distances, but also on its state of rotation, but also which on physically may be taken as a characteristic not appertaining to the system in itself. In order to be able to look upon the rotation of the system, at least formally, as something real, Newton objectivizes space. Since he classes his absolute space together with real things, for him, rotation relative to an absolute space is also something real. Newton might no less well have called his absolute space ether. What is essential is merely that besides observable objects, another thing, which is not perceptible, must be looked upon as real, to enable acceleration or rotation to be looked upon as something real. To be looked upon it is true that real. Mach tried to avoid having to accept as real something which is not observable by endeavouring to substitute in mechanics a mean acceleration with reference to the totality of the masses in the universe in place of an acceleration with reference to absolute space. But inertial resistance opposed to relative acceleration of distant masses presupposes action at a distance, and as the modern and physicist does not believe that he may distance. accept this action at a distance, he comes back once more, he if he follows Mach, to the ether, which has to serve as medium for the effects of inertia. The ether, but this conception of the ether, to which we are led by Mach's way of thinking, differs essentially from the ether as conceived by Newton, by Fresnel, and by Lorentz. Mach's ether not only conditions the behavior of inert masses, but is also conditioned in its state of by them. Masses. But Mach's idea finds its full in development its in the them. ether of the general theory of relativity. Idea According to this theory, the, the metrical the qualities of the continuum of space-time differ in the environment theory, of different points of space-time and are partly conditioned by the matter the existing of outside of the territory under consideration. This space-time variability
flexibility and reciprocal relations of the standards of space and time, or perhaps the recognition of the fact that empty space in its physical relation is neither homogeneous nor isotropic, compelling us to describe its state by ten functions. The gravitation potential G M N has, I think, finally disposed of the view that space is physically empty. But therewith, the conception of the ether has again acquired an intelligible content, although this content differs widely from that of the ether of the mechanical undulatory theory of light. The ether of the general theory of relativity is a medium which is itself devoid of all mechanical and kinematical qualities, but helps to determine mechanical and electromagnetic events. What is fundamentally new in the ether of the general theory of relativity, as opposed to the ether of Lorentz, consists in this, that the state of the former the of is at every place determined by connections with the matter the of and the state of the ether in neighboring places, which are amenable to law in the form of differential equations, with the matter, whereas the state, the state of the Lorentzian ether, ether in the absence of electromagnetic fields is conditioned by nothing outside itself and is everywhere the same. The ether of the general theory of relativity is transmuted conceptually into the ether of Lorentz if we substitute constants for the functions of space which describe the former, disregarding the causes which condition its state. Thus we may also say, I think, that the ether of the general theory of relativity is the outcome of the Lorentzian ether through relativation. As for the part which the new ether is to play in the physics of the future, we are not yet clear. We know that it determines the, the metrical relations in the space-time continuum, the for example, the configurative possibilities of solid bodies as well as the gravitational fields, continuum. but we do not example, know whether it has an essential share in the structure of the electrical well elementary particles constituting fields. matter, but we do not know nor do we know whether it is only in the proximity of ponderable masses that its structure differs essentially from that of the Lorentzian whether, it is only whether the, the geometry of spaces of, of cosmic extent is approximately Euclidean. From that of the but we can assert ether. by reason whether of the, the relativistic of equations of gravitation that there must be a departure from Euclidean relations with spaces of cosmic order of magnitude if there, there exists a, a positive mean Euclidean density, no matter how small, of, of the matter in the universe. If there in this case, the universe must of necessity be spatially unbounded and of finite magnitude, its case, magnitude the being determined by the value of that mean density. If we consider the gravitational field and the electromagnetic the field from the standpoint of the if ether we hypothesis, the we find a remarkable the difference between the two. The there can be no space nor any part of space without gravitational potentials, for these can confer no upon space its metrical qualities without which it cannot be imagined at all. The existence of the gravitational field is inseparably bound up with the existence of space. The existence of On the, the other hand, a part of space may very well be imagined without an electromagnetic field. On the other hand, a Thus, part of space in contrast with the gravitational well field, the electromagnetic field seems to be only secondarily linked to the ether, the formal nature of the electromagnetic field being as yet in no way the determined by that of, of gravitational ether. Being as yet in no way From the present by state of theory, it looks ether. as if the electromagnetic the field, as opposed to the gravitational the field, rests as upon as an entirely new formal motif as though nature might just as well have endowed the gravitational ether with fields of quite another type, for example, with fields of a scalar potential instead of fields of the electromagnetic. 
conductor. Instead of fields of the electromagnetic Since according to our present conceptions, Since the elementary particles of matter are also in their essence nothing else than condensations of the electromagnetic field. Of the our present view of the universe presents present two realities which are completely separated from each other conceptually, although connected causally, namely gravitational ether and electromagnetic field, or as they might also be called, space and matter. And matter. Of course, it would of be a great advance, a great advance if we could succeed in comprehending the gravitational field and the electromagnetic field together as one unified conformation. Then, then, for the, the first time, time the epoch, epoch of theoretical, theoretical physics founded, founded by Faraday, Faraday and Maxwell would reach, would reach a satisfactory, a satisfactory conclusion. conclusion. The contrast between the ether and matter would fade and away, through the and through the general theory of relativity, the whole of, the whole of physics would become a complete system of thought, like geometry, thought, like and geometry and the kinematics, and the theory of gravitation. An exceedingly, gravitation. Ingenious, attempt in An exceedingly ingenious attempt in this direction has been made by the but mathematician H. Wheel, but I do not believe that his theory will hold, will hold its ground in Further, relation in to reality. Further, in contemplating the immediate future of theoretical, physics we, future of theoretical physics, we ought not unconditionally to reject the possibility that the facts comprised in the quantum theory may set bounds to the field theory beyond which it cannot we pass. May say that according to the general theory Recapitulating, of relativity, we may say Say that according to the general theory of relativity, space sense, is endowed with physical qualities. In this sense, therefore, to the there exists an ether. According to the general theory of relativity, space without ether is unthinkable. For in such space, there not only would be no propagation of light, but also no possibility of existence for standards of space and time, measuring rods and clocks, nor therefore any space space-time intervals in the physical but sense. Ether may not be but this ether may not be thought of as endowed with the quality of characteristic of ponderable of media, as consisting of parts which may be tracked through time. The idea of motion may not be applied to it.